Dear Professor Rubia, I am very pleased that the research program started by Giuliano Preparata has achieved this goal. It's the 10th of April 2002. The famous British electrochemist Martin Fleischmann has just visited the laboratories of nuclear physics at Enea in Frascati. The scientist that in 1989 was marginalized by the scientific community because he had announced the possibility for some atoms to fuse at room temperature, the so-called cold fusion, is a self-possessed man, but he cannot contain his enthusiasm. He decided to write to the Nobel Prize laureate Carlo Rubbia who at the time was the president of the Italian Agency for Energy, Enea. The results obtained by Italian researchers are truly impressive, and that is an understatement. We worked in this lab from about 99 to 2002. This is the constant temperature chamber where the experiment of the electrolysis took place. Antonella De Nino is a nuclear physicist of Enea in Frascati. Together with Antonio Frattolillo and Emilio Del Giudice, she has conducted the first experiment in the world aiming at verifying a theory that could explain the mechanisms of cold fusion. The theory was worked out by the Italian physicist Giuliano Preparato. We were researching. We have conducted an experiment in which it was possible to measure simultaneously the excesses of heat and possible productions of helium-4, which is a confirmation of the nuclear nature of the event. It was Carlo Rubia himself who asked the measure that could test cold fusion. Was it the greatest scientific fiasco of the century or was it a revolution with enormous scientific and technological implications? Ten years after the statement made by Martin Fleischmann and Stanley Pond, Italian Enea decided that time had come to make things clear. In 1999, when Rubia became president of the ENEA, there was a favorable framework. For the first time, cold fusion was the subject of a comprehensive research. Enea allocated 1,150 billion liras for the group of Frascati and 36 months of time to solve the enigma. Those years were full of hope and work. In the last few months, we have accelerated because we thought that the result was at hand and in April 2002, we sent an informative report to Rubia to communicate that we were ready to report on the results of the project. The results we have obtained de facto support the theory. The experiment of Frascati answered the initial question. It set a direct relationship between the production of heat and the increase of the helium atom. Cold fusion was no longer considered a collective hallucination. Carlo Rubia, the man who made the experiment possible, was the first to be informed. Rubia was very... He waited a while before giving an answer. Then he got involved in the problem. He wanted to talk to us and he told us that he thought it was a good experiment. When we filed the report, he closely followed its drafting for about 10 days and he gave us many useful suggestions and advice. It was Carlo Rubia who concretely drew the most important graphic which established the relationship between the excess of heat and the production of helium atoms. In a few days everything changed. Journals didn't publish the results of the research conducted in the Frascati laboratories for different reasons. Rubia became untraceable. The enthusiasm broke up against the impenetrable wall of silence. Did you and your colleagues notice a change of attitude in Professor Rubia? Well, we didn't talk to him anymore, but I don't know why. What made Carlo Rubia ignore the report on cold fusion, a report that he himself had ordered? Rai News 24 tried to ask him what happened in those days of the spring 2002, but the Nobel Prize laureate preferred not to answer. There was nobody who said, this is wrong, this had to be done differently. If our measure is wrong, we do not know why. In the autumn 2002, the group of researchers of Frascati played their last card. He sent the project to continue the experiment on cold fusion to the president of Enea. We did not receive any answer. Was it ignored? Yes. 
You have proved that a phenomenon that according to someone is called fusion has a concrete base. But is that all? Yes, it is. The experiment was confined to an internal technical report by Enea, Report 41 of 2002. The paradox is that they got what they were looking for in the experiment, an unmistakable measure. There is indeed the feeling that this research has been covered up for too many years. Roberto Germano wrote a book with a meaningful title, Cold Fusion, Modern History of Alchemy and Inquisition a clear and careful reconstruction of the numerous anomalies of the research, starting from the fact that in summer 1989 they got quickly rid of the research. Despite all this, there have also been much private research paving the way to different studies and experiments. We could verify that many companies, including some important ones, have invested and are investing on the study of these so-called nuclear reactions at room temperature. The interesting thing is that none of these companies likes being associated to the notorious cold fusion. They almost always use it, but without saying anything. Among the numerous companies that are maybe secretly working on cold fusion, there is one company which is doing things in a big way. It's French giant of energy. EDF, Electricité de France. On the 4th of May 2003, EDF executives met the people in charge of the Atomic Energy Commission, the French agency running all nuclear, civil and military activities in France through dozens of centers and 15,000 employees. During the summit on the 4th of May, the electricity company asked the CEA to work again on coal fusion. We have received a very strange call by the High Commission of the CEA and we have received an email in which the head of the cabinet for the High Commission of CEA invited us to Paris in order to hold a workshop on the cold fusion. The scientists of the Commission for the Atomic Energy listened to the report filed by the physicists of INEA and decided to go deep into the details of the issue. Three people came here and they stayed here for one day as guests of the ENEA. They visited the laboratories, they asked us very detailed questions, they took pictures and they did some drawings. We have misinterpreted them. We thought that they wanted to collaborate. The CEA was not interested in collaboration, but simply replied to a request made by EDF to go and see what the Italians had done. Thanks to the information collected by Enea in Frascati, EDF has created its own laboratory for cold fusion in the EDF Research Center in Le Renardier near Paris. What have the Italians done at ANO? They have certainly considered the possibility to come into game, as it is shown in the internal document that Rai News 24 has seen. The date was the 2nd of February 2004. In this document, the possible participation of ANO is analyzed in terms of financing INEA activities on cold fusion. The phenomenon doesn't seem to be a total failure, even if its implementation in the field of energy production seems to be a remote possibility. The report concludes that the decision concerning the possible financing has to take into account the scientific aspects and the reputation. That is to say that if we get involved in coal fusion, we can lose our credibility. Enel got the message and not a single euro was invested on the research. However, for those who produce energy, this piece of news could have proven useful. Using the whole grid of a gram of palladium and of a liter of heavy water, it would be possible to have tens of kilowatts for centuries. This is the quantity of the density of energy we are talking about. This is a CD-ROM case. We have changed it and transformed it into a spray guard. The laboratory of Vincenzo Iorio and Domenico Cirillo is a kind of miraculous place. Cell, cathodes, gauges, everything is handmade. Since 2003, the two scientists from Caserta have conducted hundreds of experiments using a system that is easier and cheaper than the one in Frascati. It consists of a tungsten cathode and distilled water. The results are really interesting.
adesso il plasma sta avvolgendo completamente il catodo. Now plasma is completely enveloping the cathode and is showing all the energy of this phenomenon, which at the end of the day is a physical chemical phenomenon that somehow shows some anomalies. The four gauges measure a gain of energy compared to the initial amount. Analyzing the content of the cell, you can find substances that were not there before, rhenium, osmium, ytterbium, and even gold. All these substances have an atomic number which is really close to the one of tungsten. The hypothesis is that in this little cellar of caserta, phenomena of nuclear transmutation are taking place. You can transform matter. The phenomenon itself is repeatable, but we still don't master transmutation. We still don't know which are the ideal conditions to have them. They call them experiments of cold transmutations. It doesn't make sense to talk about possible implementations in the energy production field or about the implementations in the field of transformation of chemical substances, which would be priceless. How much does an experiment cost? Well, it's very cheap. Let's say that this little water costs uh, one euro, 1.50 per liter maybe, but we use less than that. Then we use salt, potassium carbonate, 20 euros each kilo, and in the end some tungsten bars that can cost up to 20 or 30 euros. But sometimes you can pay one euro or 1.50. Iorio and Cirillo have been spending every afternoon and the Saturday night in the lab. During the rest of the week they have to work. With a decent salary and a whole day to dedicate to the issue, in two years time we could potentially develop this phenomenon. On October the 20th, 2004, surprisingly, the game opens again. The Ministry for Productive Activities meets Samueli, physicists Denino and Fratolillo, and the director of the fusion unity of Enea in Frascati, in Via Molise, in Rome. Salvatore della Corte is the manager thanks to whom the Italian government discovers cold fusion. I got familiar with the issue when I read some articles on the Enea website. We found out that those articles were very valuable from a scientific point of view. Can you remember which article you read? It was written by De Nino. Report 41 of 2002? Exactly. After a year of bureaucratic proceedings, at the end of 2005, the convention was signed. The ministry will allocate 800,000 euros for two years to finance an Enea project on cold fusion. The surprise is that the project is assigned to a different group of people led by Professor Vittorio Violante. We have reached an agreement with Enea and entrusted technicians at Enea the task to evaluate the scientific aspects. Did you call the group of Dr. De Nino and then Enea suggested you to call Violante? Yes, uh, at the end we compared the two. However, we did not interfere on which group. On the contrary, we were in touch. Enea was not so much in favor of cold fusion. To be honest, Gori and I were in favor of it. So first Enea tried to convince the ministry to finance another research activity and then under pressure Enea accepted the funds for cold fusion. But instead of financing the working group that in 2002 had already produced some results, they preferred a new group that was working with Americans and Israelis for years. We are looking for excellent results thanks to the work of the group. We congratulate them on their job. Today we have the replicability close to 50% and it is a quite a good result. We also have some gains when there are the success of power of about 50%. At the present pace, how long should it take to reach to a final or at least to a very advanced result? In research, it is difficult to give an answer about that, but uh, it could take years before achieving a result. 
Beyond the merit of each researcher, there is still a question. If you hadn't get the funds from the ministry, would Enea have invested on coal fusion? It is clear that for the managers of the agency, the case was closed in 2002, when the research project led by Denino and Fratolillo was ignored in spite of the success of the first experiment. That 1,150 billion liras of 1999, was it wasted? Yes. Why didn't the experiment work? Because nobody spent time trying to understand what we did. Is it possible to hide such a scientific revolution in a hyper-technologized world as ours? Who would be interested in doing such a thing? For instance, when steam came out, all those people who knew everything about sailing lost their title of experts. It is clear that in such a situation, you do everything you can to avoid this transition. It's all about the reactions of the establishment that is involved with such phenomenon as controlled thermonuclear fusion. Thousands of researchers and funds from the EU are involved with this kind of things, and there could be also military reasons having to do with depleted uranium. The nature of uranium is different from palladium, but it can be charged equally well with deuterium. A process of cold fusion that uses uranium instead of palladium is feasible and this could create a process of energy production which might trigger a possible nuclear fission with uranium. You can have low-impact nuclear weapons which could be used in a conventional war. Someone in the world, as far as you know, can have, can have, can have reach this result. Yes, it's a perfectly logical uh, train of thought which would lead to uh, this type of experiment. Uh, who is more likely to have performed this? Anywhere. Many years ago, Martin Fleischmann retreated to a small town in England. At the entrance of his cottage, there is a line that has been supposedly pronounced by a saint. The life can pass, but the work be well done. What is so amazing about the whole story is that, that being so, it is really very surprising that there has not been more, more uh, support of the work, government support of the work given that there is a, a, the possibility of creating a clean energy source, uh, it is surprising that there has been not been more interest in, in the subject.